Elite Facts presents 10 Actors Who've Turned Down Major Roles 10. David Bowie, Max Zorin in View to a Kill So, along with being one of the most beloved artists in the world, David Bowie was also a fairly accomplished actor. We all know him for his role in Labyrinth as Jareth the Goblin King, but did you know he was considered for a major role in a James Bond film? Originally, producers at E.ON wanted David Bowie to play Max Zorin, the main villain in A View to a Kill. However, Bowie turned down the offer, stating, quote, After Sting, I rather think it was the other way about. I think for an actor, it's probably an interesting thing to do, but I think that for somebody from rock, it's more of a clown performance, and I didn't want to spend five months watching my double fall off mountains. Damn shame, really, although we did get Christopher Walken's usual unusual self as Max Zorin, so it all worked out, really. 9. Leonardo DiCaprio Patrick Bateman in American Psycho Considering DiCaprio's more recent performances in films like Wolf of Wall Street and Django Unchained, he probably would have been a perfect fit for this role. This film takes the cake for big-name dropouts. Johnny Depp was the first A-lister tapped to play Patrick Bateman, followed by Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. Lionsgate Films actually publicly announced DiCaprio as the lead before he was urged to back out on account of his Titanic fan base that might not have responded too fondly to the heartthrobs slicing up women with a chainsaw. Ewan McGregor then got the offer but passed after personal lobbying from Christian Bale, who eventually brought his brilliance to the killer. Did he actually kill anybody? 8. Will Smith – Neo in The Matrix Will Smith was initially offered the role of Neo in The Matrix. He turned it down on account of the concept being too complicated, and he didn't see the film performing well at the box office. Well, we all know how the movie fared. 7. Ray Liotta – Tony Soprano in The Sopranos So originally, the idea of The Sopranos was essentially a Goodfellas TV series. Hell, even when the show was airing, it felt exactly like Goodfellas. Originally, however, the main cast was actually different. Lorraine Bracco, who played Tony Soprano's psychiatrist in the series, was originally supposed to play Tony Soprano's wife, Carmela Soprano. That alone is a pretty big change. However, James Gandolfini wasn't David Chase's, the show's director, first choice. Instead, the show's producers wanted Ray Liotta to play the role of Tony Soprano. It was literally going to be a Goodfellas television show starring both Henry Hill and Karen Hill's actors from the original film. 6. Michelle Pfeiffer – Clarice in Silence of the Lambs Michelle Pfeiffer was offered the role of Clarice Starling in Jonathan Demme's adaptation of The Silence of the Lambs. She turned it down because she found the movie to be too violent and disturbing. Jodie Foster won the role, and it got her a second Academy Award for Best Actress. 5. Matthew Broderick, Walter White in Breaking Bad Oh man, thank God Brian Cranston got this role. Okay, Matthew Broderick isn't an awful actor, he can be a good actor when he wants to be. However, most of his performances are almost lifeless, and for a role like Walter White, you are more or less required to pretty much ooze emotion. The character of Walter White will go down in television history as one of the most acclaimed and notable parts on the small screen, thanks mostly to Brian Cranston's masterful portrayal. But believe it or not, Matthew Broderick was also considered for the role. Though the show's creator, Vince Gilligan, wanted Cranston for the part, the other producers apparently weren't convinced, having only seen Cranston play the dad on Malcolm in the Middle. Eventually, they came around, which is definitely a good thing. The actor's portrayal helped make Breaking Bad one of the most followed and acclaimed shows on TV, and earned him four Emmys for Outstanding Actor in a Drama. 4. Jim Carrey – Edward Scissorhands Coming off of the blockbuster hit Batman in 1989, 1990's Edward Scissorhands was a project that spoke to the alienation of growing up an oddball in the suburbs. As such, director Tim Burton needed someone who could play marvelously sweet and horribly awkward all at once, while winning the heart of blonde beauty Winona Ryder. Nearly everyone in Hollywood auditioned for the role, with Tom Cruise, Robert Downey Jr., and Michael Jackson being among the most notable to try on Edward's sharp duds. Somehow, comedian Jim Carrey was even given consideration for a bit, before finally getting the boot due to his inexperience as a dramatic actor. 
Envisioning Ace Ventura in Burbank is beyond bizarre. One can only guess where the film would have gone with Carrie at the core of it, a verbal joke machine relegated to saddened silence. That Burton ultimately went with Johnny Depp proved to be the best decision for both of their careers, jump-starting an actor-director relationship that's lasted over 20 years. Carrie, on the other hand, would have to wait nearly a decade before his dramatic chops were allowed to shine in The Truman Show in 1998 and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind in 2004. It's a shame because Carrie isn't just a one-trick pony. He has proven to us on a good few occasions that he does have it in him to act in dramas and not just constantly do his same old comedic shtick. 3. John Travolta, Forrest Gump 1994 will forever be known as the year that John Travolta reinvented himself. The first time, anyway. As Vincent Vega in Pulp Fiction, he transformed from a burnt-out dancing fool from the 1970s to a live-wire dancing fool of the 1990s. Strangely enough, both Pulp Fiction and Forrest Gump were each nominated for Best Picture the exact same year. The award ultimately went to Pulp Fiction, so we think it's safe to say that Travolta made the right call on this one. 2. Sean Connery, Gandalf in Lord of the Rings Sean Connery is no stranger to turning down major roles, as he has previously turned down such roles as Morpheus in The Matrix, John Hammond in Jurassic Park, and Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter franchise. However, the biggest role he's turned down is probably the role of Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The role instead went to Sir Ian McKellen. It was reported that if Sean Connery had taken up the role as Gandalf, his total payment for all three films would have been $450 million. Ouch! His reason for turning down the role was because he didn't understand the concept of the Lord of the Rings films. After seeing the success of the first film, he decided to be more open to roles even if he didn't understand the concept of the film. By doing this, he took on the lead role in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. This film was poorly received, and it pretty much caused Connery to retire from acting. 1. Jack Nicholson, Michael Corleone in The Godfather Now, this took us by surprise. In a way, it's sort of a good thing that he didn't take up the role because the film is perfect as it is. However, it is intriguing to think how much different The Godfather would have been with Jack Nicholson playing Michael Corleone. The Godfather is widely considered by many to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest, films of all time. And though Al Pacino's portrayal of Michael Corleone can hardly be questioned, we have to admit we'd love to see just a short clip of Nicholson in his shoes as the heir to the New York Mafia. Like, come on, you can't tell me it wouldn't be entertaining watching Jack Nicholson acting in that diner scene. That being said, however, Nicholson did a terrific job in a similar role much later in his career as Frank Costello in The Departed. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.